Bernard Dascoli, the French pianist, has at 23 already made a remarkable start to his career. At 17, he was nominated France's most talented artist of the year. Since then, he's won awards and acclaim at some of Europe's most important piano competitions, including Leipzig's Bach competition and Warsaw Chopin competition. Last year, at the most prestigious of all, the Leeds International Piano Competition, he was one of the three prize winners. Dascoli's achievements are all the more impressive because he's been blind since he was three. Tomorrow night, Dascoli has his London debut at the Queen Elizabeth Hall, where he'll be playing works by Messiaen, Ravel, Franck and Liszt. Although he's given many recitals in France, tomorrow marks the start of his international career as a performer, because Dascoli has announced that he'll no longer take part in the competition circuit. That's why we wanted to talk to him now, at this critical point in his career. He very gallantly agreed to be interviewed in English, on condition that I didn't speak too quickly. But first, here he is, playing Chopin's study in C-sharp minor. <laughs> Bernard, the, when Chopin wrote those studies, he wrote them as an aid for pianists. One of the reasons he wrote them was to perfect their technique, and they're yes. full of technical problems. Mm -hmm. What problems did you find in that piece? I, I think the problem is not really the technical problem, but the problem of expression. And in all the studies by Chopin, there is a problem of expression. It's not only an exercise, it's a piece of music. And uh, I try to have an expression very, very manly, very masculine, very strong, very different from the, 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 the very feminine image we uh, usually give uh, to Chopin's music. Is this because of what you know about Chopin himself or because of what you find in the music? No, it's not always the case for all the pieces by Chopin, but in um, some of, of them, it's the case. Chopin is a very complete man. What particular difficulties do you have because of your blindness? Yes, of course, uh, the, the most important difficulty was first to have a right side of the keyboard in my mind, of course. I, I had, and I have uh, even now, to, to picture the keyboard. To, to, to picture in my mind the keyboard, because the keyboard of a piano is very wide, and when you play very virtuoso pieces, it's impossible to touch, to prepare the note. And uh, when there are some crossing hands, like uh, maybe like this, it's 
impossible to prepare the note. Uh, also in, in things like this. <laughs> impossible to prepare. So that was really the, the, the most difficult problem to solve how, for me. How did you solve it then? If it's impossible to prepare, as you say, and it's fiendishly difficult, how did you solve that problem? Often it's possible to, to know where I'm going to, to put my hand, uh, thinking the other hand in my mind. You see, if I, if I do, I know that my left hand have to be there, near the right hand. When you started to learn, were you helped by the... I know there's a braille notation of uh, music. Did you use that? Were you helped by that? Of course. The, the only system for, for blind people to, to learn music is to read, to read um, with a braille notation. And... Uh, only at 11, I decided to, to learn that because probably before I was very lazy. <laughs> you, are, you have a, all pianists, or most pianists, love Chopin, but he's particularly important to you. You won a great Chopin competition in Warsaw. Uh, one of your teachers uh, was uh, very fond of Chopin. Um, what is your particular love for him based on? Yes, I, I think for every pianist, Chopin is very important because um, he's, in fact, he's a, a, a ver the very best teacher for every pianist. Um, with Chopin pieces, you can learn to, th to sing with a piano. Um, with, uh, to sing, sing with the piano? To sing, yes, when I, when I play things like this. Um, Only with Chopin it's possible to sing like this. And that's an excellent exercise and exercise. But I must say that for me, Chopin is really my favorite composer for the piano. I love Bach, but at the piano you can play Bach only you can play only a part of the of the music written by Bach. But for Chopin, music is um, really written for piano. And that's very important, of course, because I'm a pianist. Now, you're now going to play Bach. What are the particular characteristics of the prelude and fugue you're about to play now? Yes, it, it's a very short one, very, very short, but uh, that shines like a, a jewel. It's very luminous, and uh, the fugue, in fact, is so short that, in fact, it's not really a fugue is only a, a beginning of fugue. Uh, it's like a joke. I'm not sure um, Bar was very serious when, when he wrote that.
Is it possible, <coughs> excuse me, is it possible to say what you're thinking about when you're playing a piece like that? Do you find inspiration outside music with the other things that you do? You ski, you swim, you do all sorts of other things. Does oh, that help yes. your music or just help you relax? No, it's really important to, to, to do a lot of things outside music. You can't live only with music. Music is really important for me. But in fact, I can find my inspiration in a lot of things. I, I love reading and I love uh, practice sports, like effectively uh, swimming or skiing. But um, I think when you are a pianist, you use your muscles, you, you use your brain, and you use your sensitivity. And to develop that in the life, it's necessary to, uh, to practice sport for your muscles, to practice, um, to read, to, to have a, a general culture very, very wide uh, for your brain and for your sensitivity. And even I play chess for my brain too. <laughs> Are there pianists whom you especially admire and learn from by listening to their records or going to their concerts? Yes, of course, there are a lot of pianists. Um, very old one, pianists who are dead now. For me, a lot of them, like Corto, Geyser King, um, Schnabel, a lot of them are for me examples. But I am also very, very near the young pianists, like uh, Poligny, for example. For me, Poligny is really maybe the best. But it's not alone. There are a lot of other pianists, very, very good. Your repertoire stretches from Bach to Messiaen, and yet people say that you uh, tend to choose the romantic pieces. If that's true, why do you think that's so? Uh... That might be true, but uh, I'm not sure. I, I play a lot of things, but actually, in the romantic repertory, I am, I am maybe better because it's, I'm, I'm young, <laughs> only, I'm only 23, and uh, maybe it's a period for romanti romantic thing, <laughs> things. You're going but to play something very romantic now, which is uh, Schubert's impromptu. Would you like to say something about that? Yes, it's romantic, but uh, I'm not sure it's ultra-romantic. It's not sentimental at all. It's not Rachmaninoff or Tchaikovsky, of course. But I prefer that kind of romantism. Yes, this, this Schubert impromptu is really marvelous piece, you have a very, uh, very singing phrase. Uh, I can play only this phrase. But there is um, another thing that um, use Schubert. It's the, the stream, there is in a lot of pieces by Schubert, this stream. You see. And there is also a um, figuration very dramatic uh, in the middle of the piece. And that's really a very beautiful piece.
Well, I thought that was absolutely wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Really was. Um, you've decided to give up playing in competitions, although you're only 23. And will you find it very different playing in concerts from playing in competitions? Oh, yes, of course. It's very different because, you know, in a, in a competition, uh, you have to play a bit like, like a very good pupil, but you can express exactly what, what you want to, to say. You can't? You can't. It's impossible. You are not really yourself. It's why I prefer to play in concerts, of course. Competitions are a bit like, like sports. You are a sportsman in a competition. You are not really a musician. You're going to end with a Liszt study. You began with a Chopin study. And again, the Liszt study was written, one of the reasons it was written was to extend technique and as a means of pianists perfecting their technique. What have we to look out for in this study? What are the difficulties you are going to encounter playing this? Yes, this study is uh, very different from um, the one I played by Chopin to, be, to start. Um, Liszt was probably the most, um, the most virtuous uh, pianist in the world, any time. But um, this piece um, needs um, virtuosity, uh, very, very intimate, intimate virtuosity. Intimate virtuosity? Yes, yeah. very intimate, very delicate. One last question. You've been very passionate and, as I said at the beginning, gallant in speaking in English. <laughs> what would you say was the main difference between playing Liszt, which you're now about to do, and playing Chopin? I think, uh, first, Chopin is a poet. Liszt is a, a virtuoso. And uh, it's um, probably the, the greatest uh, difference. But they live exactly in the same period. And uh, in at least um, lived uh, longer, but in fact, uh, they are very near. But I think Chopin is uh, more inside himself than Liszt, which is very brilliant. <laughs>